two pressing issues facing San Leandro, in my opinion, are San Leandro Hospital and the Hollis Wind Turbine business. For San Leandro Hospital, um, how, I'm, how the city should best address this issue is to continue bringing the stakeholders together to find solutions. Continue pressing on with Sutter Health and uh, Alameda County and the community to find a solution to keep San Leandro Hospital open. This senior, citizen, this senior center, I call it a wellness center. It is phenomenal that this senior center is placed near to the hospital. It's a wellness center, and if people, our seniors, participate in the programs that we have here, it will keep them from going to the hospital. As for wind, palace wind turbines, address the concerns expediently. Be a more responsive government, and be willing to negotiate. I received the Sierra Club endorsement because they felt I have a good handle on protecting our environment. What we can't do is afford to let innovative businesses with the potential to create local jobs slip through our fingers. Thank you. I'm glad my opponent agreed with my opening statement that San Leandro Hospital is a priority. And as long as there's an opportunity to save the hospital, then we absolutely need to work in that direction. Sutter is holding all the cards, but there are talks with, with different groups now they're talking about trilateral agreements. As long as there's an opportunity to save the hospital, we need to continue to fight to do so. But the biggest issue facing the city right now has to do with our fiscal sustainability. It's an issue that our new mayor was elected on, that the populace of St. Leandro has said we must address, and that's pensions. I am endorsed by the Labor Council, and the Labor Council knows my position on pensions, and they still believe I'm the best person to represent working families. But our pension system is unsustainable. San Leandro's pension system is different than all the other jurisdictions in Alameda in that we pay our full employee pension costs. We need to negotiate a settlement with our, with our workers that's still fair for them, still provides some competitive advantage over other cities and jurisdictions to retain the talent we need, but that puts us on a path to sustainability. We cannot improve our parks. We cannot hire new police officers. We cannot improve city services unless we get our fiscal house in order. So the two initiatives that we need to work on right away, and there are, there are a lot, but saving San Leandro Hospital must be a priority and addressing our pension problem. Thank you so much. All right, so it's pretty simple in my eyes. The biggest pressing issues that the city is currently facing is number one, public safety. Crime is up considerably, considerably all throughout the city. In addition, our officer head count is down. Now I'm not saying adding additional officers is gonna solve our crime problem. What I'm saying is that it frees up a lot of resources to implement some community policing programs and some youth awareness programs, and it allows us to kind of work on developing our community from a, a safety and a safeness standpoint into uh, embracing a culture of being a crime-free area. Right now what we have is a, a perception issue. Uh, our city, uh, criminals perceive our city as a place to go to commit crimes. I know this firsthand. I worked at uh, Target at Bayfair Mall, and if anybody's been to Bayfair Mall, then they understand that it has a bit of a crime problem. It's not really a super safe place to shop at night, or sometimes even during the day. So crime is definitely an issue. So if, if people think like, well, we shouldn't go to Bayfair Mall to shop because it's not safe, well then it's gonna draw off away from the businesses. And the businesses aren't gonna, and this kind of leads into my second pressing issue. So the second pressing issue is the businesses. The businesses don't want to come to our city. They don't want to come to our city because they can't draw the revenue they need to become profitable. So this is largely in part to the fact that we have a safety and a, a, a crime problem in our city. If we can attack the crime problem, make our city a safe place again, a vibrant place, then businesses will start to come back and you will get the places that make you into a, a more desirable community. A community where people want to shop, a destination community, uh, people were, were, which will increase our revenue and help solve some of these budget and pension problems. And that's all I'm saying. Businesses and crime prevention. Well, my message is going to be very consistent. It's budgetary and public safety. Budgetary because of the fact that 
we have to take a look at our budgets and see what we can look into to see where we're inefficient and where we can be more efficient. There are some areas that we need to cut, balance that to try to balance the budget. The other areas is how we can how we can generate more revenue. Revenue is really the key to helping our city. If we can bring in the attractive businesses, expand the shopping and retail, that's going to help raise uh, the revenue, raise the, the, the property taxes, as well as bring into the general fund. The public safety aspect, what's key is community part, uh, partnership. One of the things that we've done in our HOA is that we partner with the police. We have community watch where we have a, a patrol actually looking throughout our community and actually that has helped us reduce our, our crime rate. We don't have like a little flashing light that goes around. Actually, the community patrol just drives around and actually looks for troublemakers and actually stop, stop those problems dead on. We call the police, we partner with the police, actually save the police resource time as a result of that. And that's how we can have the police actually have more resources to dedicate more to the city. Thanks.